Welcome back to the channel guys. I'm Jerry from Bigelow Woodcraft and today's the day. I'm going to haul this into the garage and start working on some modifications. I've mentioned to you guys what most of them are. Um, I want to get the carriage power feed up and down. So that's the next several weeks project. I got to order all the parts but I'm going to get it in today and we're going to start measuring things up. So what I have to do first so I gotta hook this all up and tow it out of here. So a couple weeks ago, I dug all these out and put them on blocks. Now, I've been gone to Florida for the last several weeks. Uh, I took a little vacation and I just returned home a few days ago. And it's time. It's January 23rd or something like that. I have a couple more videos to come out still, but uh, I'm gonna, these will be supplemental videos. Plus I wanna do a little maintenance on on uh, the sawmill. So I'm going to get the tongue hooked up. It's cold. It's in the mid 20s today. Florida was in the 80s. I was down in uh, Fort Myers area, Cape Coral. Stand right here and block the wind. And it was nice. A lot of sunshine. I can see why these retired folks like it down there. But let's get this hauled into the garage. I've never towed this since I put the extensions on. So it's going to be interesting to see how much it flex down. I may have to run a strap down to it. And I may have to go get another hat too. I don't think I dress appropriately. Oh, this is going to be a pain. I'm going to build only go a half at a time. Oh boy. This is going to take a while. I have to move, I'd have to move the carriage guys to uh, get to this jack stand. And I don't have a battery out here with me. This will be the moment of truth when I let this one down to see these down here and see how it goes. What is this? <sighs> Look what I found. It's a piece. I think it's a bearing cap probably for one of the, the wheels. Just found it on the ground. Put that in my pocket. Okay, I've got three more jacks. Let's do this in order though. There's my thumb screw. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Told you to get a bag of those. You'll lose those.
The only thing holding it, I believe, are these this frozen sawdust. That ain't gonna work. Don't hit the tire. There we go. I'm gonna have to take this really easy. I just realized I didn't uh, strap down the carriage. That could actually fall right off. I only got 100 yards to go. Let's see what happens. It's in here, the OS 27's in here. And let's talk about what I'm planning on doing with it. Now I've thought of several different ways of uh, making this carriage, much like the auto feed, go up and down all by itself. One way I thought about doing it is much like uh, Woodland Mills does. They put a box here or a power motor here and I've seen some guys do that. And just geared in a motor and using the cable system. Let me show you something though. The reason I'm eliminating that, a couple of reasons. One is these cables are consumables. Two is this brake still needs to be used because my motors, 
even though they're gear driven, don't have brakes on them, electric brakes. These are wheelchair motors, and they these guys use them for RCs. And, oh, and they're magnetized, obviously. Um, and the brake sits right up here. I believe that takes 24 volts to actuate, and it stops really hard. I understand. So a lot of the, this, these came with the brakes removed, and I understand that's the way you want them for RC motors, and I guess. But they don't have brakes, so what would keep this from going down? I'd still be relying on that brake. So I want to eliminate that. Another way I thought about it, if you look at Woodmiser and a couple other mills, they use still something like this, but they use a chain system. So I could use, I could run a chain up and down and run my motor to run up those chains. So chains would in essence be replacing the cables. I like that idea, but I want to, I had another couple other ideas. I think it would even be more durable than the chain. I the chain would be super durable. You know, and to be honest with you, it might be a real easy build. Um, you could still use this, but again, I don't have brakes. So you'd use this, you'd run your sprocket if I did this and up and down. No, yes, I could come up with a ways to make a little brake system, not a problem. Okay. Another way I thought about it is my, like your garage door is a torsioning spring across here to replace the brake system. And then, uh, you could use any, you could use the cables without the brake. You could use the chain, but I think that torsioning system would be pretty slick with a torsioning spring. You could utilize that. I don't know if any mills use that. Now, here's what I was thinking of. I worked in the engineering world for a long time. No, not a long time, 12 years. All the machines have these lead screws. These are ball screws on this particular model. So one day I started thinking about that. Some of you keep that in mind. So I was thinking about utilizing uh, lead screws. And I was thinking about it one day, and I'm, lo and behold, I'm going through a forum. You know, I've, been, I've got all my notes written down, and a guy did this, so I reached out to him. In fact, he commented on my, a couple of my videos regarding, and I'll, uh, I wish I remembered his name. I'll mention his name here. And he used the same concept I was thinking of, the threaded screws, replacing the cables, uh, threaded screws are threaded with uh, basically threaded rod. Um, I'm going to choose, I was thinking either three quarter inch or one inch. I think I'm going to go one inch. I reached out to him and he also did one inch as well. Um, I had no problems with it. I'm going to use stainless. I'm not 100% sure what he used. I Probably stainless. They're going to be kind of pricey, but I'm thinking that's going to give me my best bang for the buck. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use this motor. My plan is to replace the cables, this whole cranking system, with a screw on each side. Gears and some chains between them. Again, a directional motor. These are directional motors. You can go forward and reverse. You can slow them down, increase the speeds. So that was something I'd like to do. I'm going to upgrade my electrical box because I'm going to need more room. Um, and I'm going to upgrade all the switches. You saw my angst last summer. The thing works flawlessly. The switches are a pain. So I'm going to get everything soldered, proper switches, disconnects and plugs, um, and go from there. This is going to be a fun project. I haven't ordered any of the parts yet because I need to get some measurements off of all this. So in the next week or two, you'll see that build. So right now, I'm considering using lead screws to go up and down. Acme thread, one inch, probably... One inch with an eight inch, or one inch with an eight pitch. Put some wipers or some flexible tubing, collapsible tubing that will go up and down with the carriage as well. And I'll have to gear this in such a manner that it doesn't take all day to go up and down. It will get there 
relatively quickly. That's my plan, guys. Um, and along with a few other modifications for this year, get it tuned in, just go through everything. I want to remove the clutch. I've not gone through a clutch yet, but I, I suspect it's going to go up pretty soon. So I'm going to pull it off, see if I get some model numbers or even some bearings off of it. I don't know if those are replaceable bearings. Nothing else. I'll get another clutch ordered probably. And not from, I don't think I'll do it for Frontier. I think I'll probably just go uh, Granger and find something on there or might even be one on Amazon. If anybody knows a good clutch for it, let me know. What else is planned for this? Um, Got to fix the emergency stops. I'm going to eliminate those switches that don't work inside here. And I'll just do a few other things. So I got to get this thing leveled up, get some measurements, and that, that'll be about it. What? There, it seems like there's something else I wanted to mention to you guys. Hmm. Oh, I also want to experiment with some 24 volt to these motors too, to see if I'm getting a little bit more speed on my return. You know, I could always control it, slowing it down going forward, but I'd like to little faster on the return. Oh, this is what I was thinking. 12 volts, these motors are strong enough to pull back one inch boards and even two by fours with a, uh, a drawback system. How do I know? Because I've accidentally done it before and left, didn't raise it high enough and pulled the board back with the blade. And I even experimented with it and tried it on purpose. I don't know if the motors will can handle that. I know they're wheelchair motors, they're heavy duty. Um, I'll have to see, see what 24 volts does. Because I don't want to tax it, but boy, if I put a drag back system on that thing, kind of like the wood misers and a few other mills out there, that'd be pretty slick. My ideas with this mill is to do as much and show you as much as I can on this mill for as cheap as I can. This is a $5,500 mill with the trailer package. Right now I've got an auto feed. If I can get the carriage going up and down, that you're looking at, I don't know what price point, I'm, that fifteen to twenty thousand dollar mills before you even start getting those options. I could be wrong. There might be some cheaper mills. Um, I know Woodmiser does make a uh, power feed that uses a rope, but I still believe that's about a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar mill. So that'd be interesting if that was capable. And that might, if it is, it might be this year. It might not be. It just matter welding up a bracket underneath there. There's something else I feel like, but. Oh, there was another way I thought, you know, a guy could actually lift these if he had some strong enough linear actuators too. I was even thinking about that. But I think the best way would be the screws. And then I'm, I think my, I see a lot of you guys have these shims. I never got the shims with mine, and I see my mill now is starting to tilt down. So I'm going to reach out to probably Frontier and get a set of those shims set my way. Because I believe it is starting to lean down. And where I put those screws is also going to matter. I'm going to try to put those screws as close to this post as possible. If I, let me show you what I mean. This pulley, if I put my screw here where this pulley is, I think it's going to lift like this. Now, granted, it already is because of that there, but it's lifting from this point and this point. In fact, you could probably, you know, but well, you sure could. I think I could level this mill out by lengthening, loosening that nut down there. That would allow this to pivot down, I believe. Am I seeing that right? Maybe. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. But so I'm going to try to put that threaded rod as close to where this contacts. So it will pick up close to this. Sounds like someone's pulling in. UPS maybe? I'm going to try to put this threaded rod as close as I can to this pulley right here. Or this cable attachment right here. Maybe just offset a hole just a little bit. So I'll have to bore through there. I'll have to make sure there's nothing in there too. I don't believe, I can't recall what's in there. I don't think there's anything 
and that space right there. There may be. I'll have to, well, we'll see. That might change all my plans, so. So guys, we have a plan. We're gonna start with the screws and see what happens. There'll be a sprocket connecting these two. Probably my drive motor will live on a bracket right up here or up underneath, maybe even up underneath. But we'll see, figure out how to mount it. That'll do it, guys. If you're interested in this, follow along. Guys, take care. Have a great day. It's wintertime in Michigan. I cannot be, I'm not really using this mill right now. It's just too darn cold outside for me. We'll see you at the mill next time.